Well, welcome to the first Carnegie National Church of Dunbar. It's good to see the few of us that came out in the rain and flood and tornadoes and other weather events happening this morning. Um, if we get a tornado warning, hopefully somebody will let me know. I left my phone in the back, and we'll like relocate to the vestry. I mean, this building has been standing for 200 years, so it's probably pretty safe. Um, you can go to the basement. <laughs> I'll go to the vestry. <laughs> That's creepy. I mean, I, I, it's nice down there. It's kind of informative, and it's really cool. If nobody's been down there, it's got the. It, it, no, it's not nice. It's informative and it's interesting, but uh, it's kind of creepy. And being down there, no, no offense to all of you, but you know, thirty of us down there. When there's a tornado taking the building away, I'll, I'll wait in the best room for y'all. <laughs> Um, but welcome, thanks for coming out. Uh, it really is important to be here even when the weather is not great. Um, and the fan is always in my office if it's not here, so don't hesitate to grab it for fireside or worship or whatever. Um, I don't know if it helps that much, but it's a lot of things. Oh good, good. Well, maybe I'll just come sit over there next to you. And, um, do we have any joys this morning? Oh, do you, have, do you have air conditioning or just fans? And a creepy basement. Okay, everybody back up. <laughs> it should be fine. I did, when I was in uh, St. Uh, what was it? St. Peter's Evangelical UCC in Granite City, Illinois. I was a chaplain over there. And one morning, a tornado came through. St. Louis has the arch, which was directed the weather around St. Louis, so we were safe. But Grand City was on the other side of the river. And a tornado went up Main Street um, and did not damage the church at all. But several of the buildings, like along Main Street, were damaged. And it was like, wow, this is a. It was one of those Sunday morning thunderstorms. Oh, it was strange. But it, it, right when I was getting ready to go to church, I looked on my three channels and one of them had the weather and it was like, oh, that's like where I'm going. So, and it was, I guess, confirmed F1 or something. It took, you know, took off shingles and little roofs and stuff. But enough that it, you know, kind of, it, it's, it's a wake up call, I guess. So, are there joys to share this morning besides the fact that we're here? I'm coming. <laughs> uh, yeah, we had a good one. Oh, <laughs> want some change? <laughs> oh, I dropped a 20 in. <laughs> uh, we, uh, Karen and I have a good thing to share with everybody. Uh, the 4th of July, if you want to hear that weekend, uh, we had our ninth grandchild born. Uh, it is Addison the fifth. Wow. Uh, generation. Uh, was it good? He was born uh, two months early. He is uh, was extremely important and he's doing wicked good. Uh, right now he's off the oxygen. He's still in our incubator and the next week the sun will be able to put him in. Great, great. <laughs> uh, uh, well, glad to see some fish. And uh, I, I was watching him, I didn't touch him, anything like that. <laughs> but uh, you have to walk, you have to clean your hands and make sure you've got a bump in the air and all this kind of stuff. Watch him for at least 20 seconds. But anyway. Uh, age and my son there, he stuck his hand in there. And, you know, he touched the boy and he actually grabbed his finger. Now, when I saw these fingers, it was kind of thick. They are little, tiny things. They are so small <laughs> that I, I couldn't figure out what they were like. I was telling Karen this last time I was figured out there. Little tiny baby carrots is what they look like. They took care of it, you know, they moved and everything, you know. It was Cool. Uh, he was four pounds, three ounces. And, uh, but he's doing great, and good, growing good. And, uh, things are good. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. Pretty wild, huh? Yeah. And some of us do, after using the restroom, wash our hands for 20 seconds. 
<laughs> just letting you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you don't have to like draw the water. <laughs> That's awesome how you can do that. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> Are there any other joys to share this morning? If not, would you please join me in our call to worship found in your bulletin? Come, let us gather in the presence of the divine who speaks to us through the pages of ancient texts. We gather with open hearts, ready to receive the wisdom and understanding that flow from the source of all knowledge. As the rain and snow nourish the earth and bring forth new life, may the words we hear today water the seeds of understanding within us so we may bear fruit in our lives. Let's worship together, seeking the deep understanding that the only that only the Spirit can provide. And our opening hymn this morning for my worship playlist is uh, number 309, uh, which is We Are Your People. And I'd invite you to stand as we join in singing. Gracious and loving Creator, we gather in this sacred space, seeking your presence and understanding. Help us to listen with open minds and open hearts as we explore the teachings of Isaiah and Matthew. May the stories and lessons we encounter today take root in our souls, growing into a harvest of knowledge and compassion. Guide us on this journey of discovery that we may go closer to you and one another.
Our first reading this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 through 13. For the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst in, into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the, up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Our second reading is from Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 28. The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such a great crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And then he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path. And the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground where they did not have much soil. And they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But then the sun rose. They were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Then the disciples came and asked him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them has not been given. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The reason I speak to them in parables is that seeing that they do not perceive, and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. With them indeed, it fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that says, You will indeed listen but you will indeed look, but never perceive. For those people's hearts has grown dull, and their ears hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes so that they may not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I will heal them. But the blessed, but the blessed are, but blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown in the past. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is one whose heart who hears the word and immediately he receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But it's for what is sown on the good soil. This is the one who hears the word, understands it, who in a hundredfold and another sixty, and in another thirty. Thank you. 
people that might be the only ones who don't. So switch gears. Um, so uh, I, one of the things that I did this week was I was looking into the word hearing, which Matthew uses a lot. Um, and the Hebrew, or the, the Greek word, I'm not sure exactly what, what, was, what the word was used, but apparently it uh, means more than just listening with our ears. The word really means to, to hear it and then to process it and then to be able to go out and act on it. Um, so Jesus isn't saying just listen. He's saying this is an active listening that's going to take time. It's going to, it's going to require action on our parts. Um, so I hope you have heard the word of the scriptures this morning and to take that into heart and, and be able to put it to use. Would you please join me in our uh, Lord's Prayer together? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Join me in prayer. God, please bless the words of our mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, that they will be acceptable in your sight. Amen. This week we begin to explore the parables, stories that Jesus told us to help, under, help us understand important truths with using vivid pictures. I have to, have to admit that parables are fun. They're a great summertime passage. They contain truths. But are presented in a fun way. And they can also mean different things to different people at different times. So my interpretation today is only my interpretation, what I get as I read it through this time. This morning we have a story of a farmer who scatters seed everywhere. Some fell on a path, others on rocky ground, some among thorns, and some on good soil. The farmer represents, I believe, God, who generously shares God's message without even worrying about where it lands. How many of you have planted a garden? Most of us. You don't scatter seed everywhere. It is wasteful. Luckily, I didn't plant a garden this year, but I am part of a New Hampshire gardening group on Facebook. And between that late frost that we had this year and then all the rain, like we're getting sick, Nobody is having a good crop. But the years that I have planted, I usually start by getting the soil ready. I dig little trenches, and then I spread seeds, covering up over with just a little bit of dirt. One of the churches that I served as a student pastor, there was Midwest farmers. Most did have a vegetable garden, but also planted fields full of corn or beans or other crops. These planters would do this on, these planters would do it on an industrial scale. They dig, dig a little trench, drop in a seed every foot or so, and then cover it over with dirt. Because of farming regulations, most farmers do have to buy new seed every year. So you didn't want to waste money by planting more than you needed to. And they knew exactly how much to plant their fields with none left over. God's word, God's love is abundant. We often do try to make sure that only the right people get it. I've known many people over the years who get upset that we have an open communion table, that everyone who comes to church is welcome to take communion. Those children, they tell me, don't know what communion means. I'm always tempted to ask them if they would like me to withhold communion from them when they get into a nursing home and are a bit confused. The small child knows that they are part of the community and gets to participate just as everybody else does. Isn't that a key component of communion? Perhaps the little children understand it better sometimes than we even do. Let's dive deeper into the types of soil. The first type is a hard path where the seed can't grow. I believe it represents hearts that are closed off, unresponsive, the message of God's love and hope. Just as a path is firm and unyielding, these hearts become resilient to understanding. They refuse to let God's truth penetrate their souls. 
The words of love and hope bounce off them, off the surface of their hearts, finding no entry point. Sadly, these hearts remain unchanged, unaffected by the transformative power of the message. Second soil type is rocky ground with patches of pebbles and little rocks scattered among the dirt. This could be described as New Hampshire soil. When the seed falls on this ground, it initially sprouts quickly. However, the rocks prevent it from growing, the roots from growing deep. They obstruct the seed's growth, preventing it from reaching it the nourishment that it needs. In a similar way, hearts represented by this rocky ground show initial enthusiasm for God's message and hope. They respond joyfully to the good news, eager to embrace it. But as life's challenges and difficulties arise, their shallow roots fail to sustain them. They struggle to weather the storms of life, unable, unable to find strength and the depth required to withstand adversity. Without the deepening of their understanding and commitment to their message, their faith remains fragile, easily shattered by the trials they face. And I'm sure we all know this type of person. They jump into full feet with programs in the church, joining committees and groups, doing everything they can. And when they or we hit a bump in the road, they're gone. Of course, there is nothing wrong with being involved. As church members, I love it when people get involved. But I do worry when I see people who really want to be involved in everything right off the bat. Without those deep roots, any bump risks their involvement. And the third type of soil is full of thorns and weeds. These plants compete with, for sunlight, water, and nutrients. They choke out the life of the seed, hindering its growth, suffocating its potential. Hearts represented by this thorny ground are burdened with fears, worries, and desires. The thorns symbolize distractions and preoccupations to crowd out God's message of love and hope. Their hearts hold deeply onto their concerns, unwilling to let go and make love for the seed to flourish. The worries and desires become entangled with the seed, preventing it from taking root and reaching its potential. As a result, God's message of love fails to thrive in their lives, overshadowed by competing interests. Today I see many of us in that situation, myself included. Perhaps there are more preoccupations and distractions than we had years ago. I was thinking about this the other day. Most Sundays I went to church with my mother and father if he was home. It was late 1980s and we had TV, radio, and books for inside entertainment. If I was not going to church, I would often flip on the TV. We didn't have cable, so we had like four channels. Sunday morning was Saturday morning was all the cartoons. Sunday morning they had Davy and Goliath, a stop animation play figure show. The show pictured a focus on some moral dilemma that Davy the boy and Goliath the dog would solve, all in 15 minutes without computer, without commercial interruptions. I recently learned that that show was produced by the United Lutheran Church from 1960 to 2004 distributed free of charge to any TV station willing to air it. 44 years. Of course, Sunday morning, since most people are in church, the, was a good time to show it. It filled their 15 minutes or 30 minutes at, if they showed two, at no cost to the TV station. But when weighing a live church service, or Davy and Goliath, a live service usually won out. But today, thousands of shows and movies right at your fingertips. Want to attend church but don't want to leave the house? Thousands of those available on TV and online. Of course, if you have grandkids, there's sports. There's always jobs that need to be done around the house. Lots of things competing for our time. And even sitting in church, it's hard to shut off the outside world. I've made it, I will admit that I've made a note to pick up notes on the way home. Most of us probably have. Thinking about other things, it's hard to shut off the outside world. Lastly, we encounter the good soil. 
fertile ground where the surge where the sea finds a welcoming home. The soil is free from obstacles and impediments. It allows the root, the seed, to take root deeply, enabling it to blow, grow and flourish. Hearts represented by this type of soil are receptive, open, and ready to embrace God's message of love and hope. They are like rich, well-cultivated soil, nourished and prepared to receive the seed. And as the seed sinks its roots deep into the receptive soil, it brings forth abundant fruit. To be good soil means embracing the challenges and understanding, and allowing God's seed, the seed of God's message, to take root within us. It involves being receptive and open to the message, allowing it to shape our thoughts and actions and character to hear the message. It requires an ongoing commitment to growth, continuously nourishing and cultivating the seed of understanding and faith within us. Just as a gardener takes care of their plants, we must tend to God, tend to the seed of God's message in our own lives, providing it with the care, attention, and nourishment it needs to grow. Being good soil means making space in our heart for God's message of love and hope. It means removing those rocks of doubt and skepticism that hinder our faith. It means uprooting those thorns of worry and fear. A selfless desire to choke out God's message of love. As we deepen our own understanding and allow the seeds to take root, our lives become fruitful gardens, bearing the fruits of joy, the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The good soil rarely occurs on its own. We can try to remove the rocks, we can pull out the thorns, but it's easier to do so with the help of others. When we started out our garden a few years ago, I got manure. I don't suggest putting manure in our hearts. Everything we grew that first year or two got the nutrients, everything it needed. But after that, the nutrients were used up or washed away and produced less and less as time went on. From time to time, we need to add nutrients. Every year, we have to turn over our soil. It takes time, it takes work. In the church, we like to try new things. We need help from others by showing love and compassion, sometimes challenging our own thoughts and ideas or having them challenged by others. This gardening, this growing is hard work. And sometimes, no matter what we do, we may not always succeed. Our job, I believe, is to do that hard work, gardening, to continue to scatter God's seed abundantly, God's love freely. Let it fall wherever it may. We never know for sure where it will take root and where it will not. May our lives reflect the transformative power of understanding and growth that comes from embracing God's teachings. Let us become gardeners of God's love and grace in this world, radiating God's light to everyone we meet. As we walk this journey of faith, may our hearts be like good soil, providing fertile ground for the seeds of God's message to take root and to flourish. Our next hymn this morning is number 565, God Whose Giving Knows No End. I invite you to stand as we begin this morning.
week, obviously, we pray for all the flooding in Vermont and hopefully not in New Hampshire. Um, I know down west, southwest, they've gotten hammered pretty good. Um, so we obviously keep those people in our prayers. Who else do we need to pray for this week? Uh, my son did a week of driving. And you're all still alive? And I'm going to look like you pretty soon. <laughs> um, <he's, laughs> I'm getting used to uh, seeing more and more of it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he did well. He didn't hit anybody. Um, we brought him all the way to the hardware store the other yesterday, which required like making a left-hand turn. Traffic was coming this way, and traffic was coming out, and that kind of freaked him out and us a little bit. If you stop back from the intersection, then these people assume you want them to go, and then the person coming up the hill who didn't have a stop sign decided to stop to let us go, which is confusing for us that have been driving for a while. So I don't blame him for getting a little flustered, but he made it there, and made it home, and we lived. <laughs> and no damage to the car, so it was all good. <laughs> um, are there other prayers that we can pray for Pam? Yeah. For Pam and Baby Joseph, yes. We need to put them in our prayers. Are there others? A lot of people dealing with cancer, and we are holding them all in our prayers. <laughs> well, there are some good things out of this year, but yes, I we will definitely keep all those dealing with cancer in our prayers. That's nice. Awesome. Yeah, Karen. I saw, I heard that actually come in on the scanner I was working that day. And I went, I cannot imagine as a former camp director what he's going through. And it's tough. For Pat and Ben, his prayers. No, would you please join me in the spirit of prayer? Loving God. As we gather in this sacred space, we come before you with open hearts, seeking your presence and guidance. We lift up our prayers and concerns, knowing that you hear and care for each of us. Creator of all, we pray for the world and its many challenges. We ask for wisdom and understanding to navigate the complexities of our time. May your peace prevail where there is conflict. May your healing touch bring comfort to those who are suffering. May your love unite us as one family. In this ever-changing world, we find ourselves facing uncertainty and doubt. Grant us the courage to embrace the unknown, and to trust your divine plan when it is difficult for us to comprehend. Help us to find solace in your steadfast love, knowing that you are always with us, guiding us through the storms of life. We lift up our community, our neighbors, and all those in need. We remember those who are experiencing illness, grief, or loneliness. Surround them with your healing presence and grant them strength and resilience. We ask for your compassion and understanding to be extended to those who are marginalized or overlooked, that they may be embraced with love and acceptance. And God, we continue to pray for our leaders, both in local communities and on a global scale. 
guide them in making decisions that promote justice, equality, and the well-being of all people. May they be filled with wisdom, humility, and genuine concern for the common good. As we reflect on this theme of the scriptures this week, we are reminded of the importance of understanding. Grant us the ability to truly see and empathize with one another, to listen deeply and to seek common ground. Help us to set aside our preconceptions and biases that we may engage in meaningful dialogue that leads to unity and growth. We pray for our youth who are navigating a world filled with challenges and pressures. Grant them guidance, resilience, and a sense of purpose. May they find their voices and use them to promote justice, compassion, and positive change. In our lives, we bring before you our joys and concerns, our hopes, and our dreams. Help us to live, help us to trust in your plan for our lives, even when the path is unclear. Strengthen our faith and fill us with a sense of purpose as we seek to live out the values of your kingdom. I remember all of those who have gone before us, who have shaped us and left their mark on our lives. Grant them eternal peace and surround their loved ones with comfort and strength. Gracious God, we offer these prayers knowing that you hear us and respond with love and grace. We're grateful for the presence, your presence in our lives, and we humbly ask that you continue to walk us with us on our journeys of faith. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Um, in our church, we have offering boxes in the back of the church by each door. We also accept online giving um, or checks sent to the church, whatever is easiest for you these days. But I'd like to take a moment during our during our service to dedicate these gifts. So would you please help, help join me in our offering dedication found in your bulletin. Loving source of all blessings, we offer our tithes and offerings with gratitude and joy. Bless these gifts, whether brought in person or given from afar. May they use, be used to bring hope, healing, and understanding to our world. Guide us to use our resources wisely so that they may bear fruit in ways that honor and reflect your love. Thank you for the opportunity to give and be part of your work. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling, which is number 58 on our hymn books. 59 in our hymn books. It would have been tough to play number 58 because I don't have that here. 59, I invite you to join in standing if you would like in our closing hymn. Thank you.
sitting for a benediction and we will not be. May the divine light shine upon you, illuminating your path of understanding. May your hearts be receptive to the wisdom hidden within the sacred words we have encountered today. As the rain refreshes the earth and brings forth life, may understanding rain upon your spirit, nurturing growth and compassion. May the seeds of knowledge take root within you, blossoming into a garden of understanding that bears fruit in your thoughts, words, and actions. May you be a beacon of understanding in a world longing for wisdom. Go forth with clarity, grace, and a heart filled with understanding. Summer, are there any announcements? Oh, not doing that one again. Yeah. Uh, I have one that I was looking at the uh, Mormon Historical Society and how to vote for the first story of the last. Uh, so we are very excited to show it and have a Oh, wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That is great. Yes, we will be raising money for the Steeple Fund uh, as time progresses. Maybe